Okay, this is the M1 paper for January 2021. It's question number three. It's an equilibrium question, statics, where we've got friction involved. Uh, what we're going to be trying to do is to find the smallest value of t for which the particle remains in equilibrium. We'll explain it in a second. Let's first of all draw out the diagram. And once we've got the draw diagram drawn out, Let's put all our forces on nice and big so that we can see everything on the diagram and then we can go from there. So first thing to say is we've got this mass of 20 kilograms, which means I've got a weight of 20 G acting downwards. Anytime there's contact with a particle, there's going to be reaction force. If we consider the tension T then, what I want to do is to resolve that horizontally and vertically. Uh, that's acting at an angle of 25 degrees here. So there should be absolutely no issues with the fact that this one's going to be T cos 25 and this one's going to be T sine 25. So we've taken the T and resolved that into its horizontal and vertical. Let's do the same with the 200. So we've got our force of 200 here. And what we're saying is that that one was at 15 degrees. So we've got a horizontal and a vertical component there. Exactly the same idea. This is going to be 200 sine 15, and this is going to be 200 cos 15. But now looking at this question here, it's the frictional force that's um, interesting and important. Basically, what we could do is we could have that this t is the thing that's the variable. If this t was really, really big, and in fact, the maximum that it could possibly be while staying in equilibrium, when it was the maximum it could possibly be, what would be happening to the object is the object, sorry, the object would be looking to accelerate in that direction, but not quite managing it because we want it to be the maximum and it's still remaining in equilibrium. So it would be on the point of moving and moving to the right, which means friction would act to the left. But we haven't got that. We've actually got the opposite of that. What we've got is a situation where T is as small as, it's, as it can be and still have all the forces in equilibrium. So we've got the exact opposite case where what's happening is the object is close to moving in this direction. This 200 cos 15 should be making it move to the left, but T is just big enough so that it keeps it in equilibrium. That means that the friction if it is acting, is going to be acting in that direction there. Once I've got that, now all I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to explain it to the examiner so that he understands what I mean by my diagram, but then I'll just resolve horizontally and resolve vertically. I'll put my F equals mu R in, and I should get some sort of equation I can solve. Won't be particularly easy, but let's at least get started with that. So we need to say, um, just an explanation of what we've just done, uh, forces are in equilibrium and T is the minimum value therefore object is on the point of moving And of moving to the left in my diagram. So what that means is, therefore, friction acts to the right. Okay, now I've got that situation. Let's just resolve. We know it's an equilibrium in both ways. So if I resolve vertically, first of all, what have I got vertically? I've got those three are all going up and that one's going down. They're in equilibrium. 
So I can say f equals ma. I generally tend to say that each time, but we know that acceleration is equal to zero. So I'm going to say r plus 200 sine 15 plus t sine 25. Those are all the forces going up. I just say is equal to 20g. There's one of my equations that I'll be using. Then if I resolve horizontally, what have we got going on horizontally here? So like we've just said now, in this case, I'm going to get this one minus this one minus this one is equal to null. Or forces to the left are equal to forces to the right. doesn't matter how you write it down, as long as we understand what you're doing here. So resolving horizontally then, I'm going to get, let's just say f equals ma again, but a is equal to zero, 200 cos 15 minus the t cos 25, and this is the key, minus the f. Those two are acting in the same direction. I could have put is equal to t cos 25 plus f, doesn't really matter. So there's my second equation. And obviously, as always, once I've done my resolving, I know f is equal to mu r, so f is going to be equal to 0.3 r. So what I now need to do is to solve for t. So if I'm going to do that from number one, this equation here, what I'm going to do is get r equals, in fact, let's just do it rather than telling you. So from... Number one, I'll get that R is equal to 20G minus 200 sine 15 minus T sine 25. And I'm now just going to substitute that into number two. So into number two there at the same time, realizing that that F is 0 0.3 lots of R. So it's, if F is 0 0.3, lots of R, that's going to be, right, got to be careful, let's give myself enough space to do this. This is 200 cos 15 minus T cos 25 minus F, but F is mu R. So it's mu 20G minus 200 sine 15 minus T sine 25 equals nor now that's it but I'm, you know i'm going to go and take a little bit of time to do this just be careful I'll, i will go through and do this um the way that i would normally solve it really easy to make mistakes with this and you know i want to get all the marks if i can for this so if i'm doing this now the way i do it yeah, well i'll show you i'll multiply out the bracket first so so leave this don't do anything with this yes you could get values for all of these things if you wanted to but i don't want to be using the calculator too much so um 0.3 times 20 g that's 6g, 0.3 times 200, that's going to be 60, and the minus and the minus make that plus 60, sine 15. I hope you understand what I'm doing. So I've done that times that, I'm now doing that times that. Um, and then plus 0.3t sine 25 equals 0. So I basically just multiplied out that bracket. I'm going to take the t's over to one side and leave everything else on the other side. And then once I've done that, I'll divide out. But let's do that first of all. So um, if I take the t's over to the other side, I'm going to be left with, oops, 200 cos 15 minus 6g plus 60 sine 15 is equal to t cos 25 minus 0.3t sine 25. In effect, all I've done is just take that over the other side and that over the other side, but doing it carefully and slowly. Now I'm going to factorise and take the t out of these bits. So I'm going to get t cos 25 minus 0.3 sine 25 that bit's equal to what we had before. I'm just going to use my iPad to do that. Sorry, but it just saves me a bit of time. And so T then works out to be 
that value all divided by, so 200 cos 15 minus 6g plus 60 sine 15 all divided by whatever cos 25 minus 0.3 sine 25 is. And say, if it was me, I'm a little bit old fashioned, but I'd actually now do that top value. That works out to be 149.915. Nine four, sorry, divided by do the bottom value 0 0.77952 and then get our final answer. I got 192.3, which you have to say two significant figures, remember. I actually made it 190 there. Now I know at any stage through this question, you might have made a decimal value for that, decimal value for that bit. That could have been one, that could have been one, but you still, you know, still got lots of values, um, the accuracy of which. Uh, I don't know, I'd rather just wait till the very, very end. It doesn't take me ages to, to write it all out. And I think it's just worth it to try and get those final marks at the end there. Okay, complicated algebra, but hopefully that makes sense.